Hmm? Topic: Electric charge. Huh? Hmm? How does a plastic comb attract paper? What? Hmm? You don't believe me? Hmm. Okay, let us try. <laughs> Take a plastic comb and bring it close to some pieces of paper. <laughs> hmm? Ah. Hmm? <laughs> hey, wait. Don't laugh. We need to do something first. Hmm. Rub the comb on your dry hair and then bring the oh. comb close to the pieces of paper. Hmm. Huh? See? I was correct. Hmm. The pieces of paper got attracted to the plastic ah. comb. Do you think it is magic? <laughs> no. Oh. The reason behind this is electric charge. Ah! Electric huh? charge is the huh? quantity of electricity held in an ah! object. There are two hmm? types of electric charges, positive and negative. However, there are some objects where the positive and negative charges are equal to one another. In such cases, we say that the object is electrically neutral. So, was the plastic comb initially electrically neutral or electrically charged? Initially, the plastic comb was electrically neutral. That means it had an equal number of positive and negative charges. Hence, it did not have the ability to exert a force and attract the pieces of paper. So, after rubbing the plastic comb on our dry hair, why was it able to attract the pieces of paper? I will tell you why. When we rubbed the plastic comb on our dry hair, it gained an electric charge. Once it got electrically charged, it got the ability to exert a force on the pieces of paper and attract huh? them. This charge is oh. called as static electricity. Mm. However, do you think, like a plastic comb, a metallic comb would also attract the pieces of paper? <laughs> no, nope, you are wrong. A metallic oh. comb will not attract the pieces of paper like the plastic comb. Wondering mm. why is that so? It is because plastic is not a good conductor of electricity. It does not allow the electric charges to flow through it onto the earth. As a result, the charges build in the plastic comb, making it electrically charged and enabling it to attract the pieces of paper. However, metal is a good conductor of electricity. It does not let the charges build in it. It allows the electric charges to flow through it onto the earth. Thus not allowing the metallic comb to get electrically charged. As a result, the metallic comb does not attract the pieces of paper. Oh. <laughs> hmm. huh? Topic, nuclear fusion. Huh? Why is nuclear fusion not used to generate electricity? You really want to know the answer to this, right? But wait, before answering the question, let us understand what is meant by nuclear fusion. When two lighter nuclei combine to form a heavy nucleus, a large amount of energy is released. This process is called nuclear fusion. Where does this nuclear fusion take place? You think that it takes place in a laboratory? No, you are absolutely wrong. Nuclear fusion takes place in the sun. The nuclei of two hydrogen atoms join together to form a heavy nucleus of helium with the release of a large amount of energy. How do you think this energy reaches us? Ah. Nah, it does huh? not reach us through power oh. lines. Wait, I will tell you. The energy huh? released after nuclear fusion reaches us in the form of sunlight, ultraviolet radiations, heat, etc. Oh. Huh? Hey, but we are already producing electricity oh. with the help of nuclear fission. So, why do we require nuclear fusion? For this, you need to first understand the difference between nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. 
As we already know, nuclear fusion is the fusion of two lighter nuclei with the release of a large amount of energy. The exact opposite process happens in nuclear fission. Here, a heavier nucleus splits into two lighter nuclei releasing a large amount of energy. Uh -huh. This process of fission is used in nuclear power plants, where a heavy nucleus of uranium is split into lighter nuclei. The energy that is released in this is used to generate electricity. Oh. However, there is a major disadvantage of huh? nuclear fission. Oh. Wondering what it is? Mm. Oh. The major disadvantage uh -huh. is that uranium is a radioactive element. Oh. When uranium undergoes oh. fission, it generates radioactive uh -huh. waste along with energy. This radioactive waste is very harmful for most life forms and the environment. Oh. Hence, huh? we need to find oh. a clean and safe source of energy to hmm? generate electricity. Huh? What source oh. would that be? Hmm? Would it be nuclear fusion? <laughs> Bingo, Hooray! you are right. Huh? Then huh? why are we not harnessing hmm? the energy of nuclear fusion to produce hmm. electricity? This huh? is because for nuclear fusion, oh. two conditions are required. Oh! They huh? are high pressure and high temperature. Only when these huh? conditions are met oh. can the two nuclei travel at very high speeds huh? resulting in collision. Mm. Huh? On mm? Earth, huh? it is extremely difficult to create such high pressure huh? and temperature. <laughs> Even if we are somehow able to create these conditions, huh? the question is how will we control them? Oh. As there mm? are many questions huh? unanswered and unsolved, mm? we have not mm. yet succeeded huh? in using nuclear fusion in the production of mm. electricity. Hmm? <laughs> Topic. Huh? Sound. Why do we hear echoes? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Hooray! Hey, hold on. Huh? Don't go into that room. Hmm? You don't want to listen to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then go ahead. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. See? I huh? warned you. Will you listen to me now? Hmm. Don't hmm? worry. The sound oh. you heard was just an echo uh -huh. of your voice. Let me explain <laughs> what an echo is. When we speak or laugh in a big empty hall, we hear our uh -huh. own sound repeatedly. Uh -huh. This is because our sound waves get reflected from the walls of the <laughs> hall back to us. Oh. The reflected sound uh -huh. that we hear is called an echo. Hence, an echo is defined as the repetition of sound caused by the reflection of sound waves from a hard surface back oh. to the listener. <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh. Hey, what are you doing? Huh? Are you trying to hear an echo? It is not that easy. Huh? There are two ideal conditions for an echo to be heard. When we speak or laugh, ah! we hear our original sound at that moment. <laughs> the sensation of this original sound remains in our brain till 0.1 seconds. Huh? This hmm. time is called the oh. persistence of hearing. <laughs> when we utter sounds, some of our sound waves get reflected while some get absorbed. If the reflected oh. sound waves reach our ears before the completion of 0.1 uh -huh. seconds, then our huh? brain does not perceive the original and reflected sounds as separate sounds. They are huh? interpreted oh. as one sound. Therefore, in order to hear two distinct sounds or an echo, the time gap between the original sound and the reflected sound or echo should be at least 0.1 seconds. This is huh? the first condition for an echo to be heard. Oh. Do you know huh? when the time gap will be more than 0.1 seconds? Mm. This gets us to the huh? second condition for huh? an echo. The minimum distance between the speaker mm? and the reflecting huh? surface should be at least 17.2 meters. Mm. <gasps> ah. When the distance is 17.2 meters <laughs> and we start speaking, Assume that the original sound reaches our ears at this time oh. and the reflected sound reaches our ears at this time, then the time interval between the reflected sound and the original sound will be equal to 0.1 seconds. As a result, we will be able to hear an echo. Huh? All right, now let us try and hear an echo in this room. It is even bigger than the previous room. 
Now, why can't we hear an echo? This is because there are many soft furnishings like sofas, carpets, curtains, etc. in this room. They absorb most of the sound waves. As the sound waves do not get reflected, we are not able to hear an echo in this room. Hence, one more thing to consider huh? if we want to hear an echo is that there should be minimal use of such sound absorbing ah! materials. Ah! <laughs> Hooray! Topic Concave mirror. Why is your reflection upside down on a spoon? Hmm. Huh? Wow. Looks ah. like you're getting ready to go for a party. <laughs> Why don't huh? you stand here and then look into the spoon? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Don't worry, your image appeared upside down because of the huh? inward curve of the spoon. The surface of huh? the spoon which is curved inwards huh? acts like a concave mirror. Huh? You look confused. Uh -huh. Let me explain. <laughs> a concave mirror is a mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards. Hmm. Being curved huh? inwards, it reflects or bounces back the light rays in a different manner. Oh. When you see yourself in a spoon, which is like a concave mirror, the light rays from your face <laughs> fall on the top of the spoon and get reflected oh. downwards. While the huh? light rays from your feet fall on the bottom of the spoon and get reflected upwards. As a huh? result, you see yourself upside down. Hmm. Now, the point where all these light rays meet <laughs> is called the focal point. When you stand beyond uh -huh. this point, only then will you be able to see an inverted image of oh. yourself. However, if you stand before the focal point, the image will look upright. <laughs> Topic Buoyancy. <laughs> oh! hmm? Can you drown in the Dead Sea? Your answer must be yes, right? You must be thinking that anyone who cannot swim will obviously drown, whether it is a swimming pool or the Dead Sea. However, that is not 100% true. Confused? Let me explain to you. When an object is partly or wholly immersed in a fluid, an upward force is exerted by the fluid on that object. This tendency of the fluid to exert an upward force on the object is called buoyancy or upthrust. This upward force is called buoyant force. So do you finally get it? Hmm, let me give you one more example. Place a piece of wood in water and push it downwards. What do you observe? It seems like something is pushing the piece of wood upwards, right? Water exerts an upward force on the wood. That is why the wood is getting pushed upwards. This force is called buoyant force, and the tendency of water to exert that buoyant force is called buoyancy. Dead Sea has a huge amount of salt dissolved in it as compared to any other sea or ocean. The presence of this salt increases density of water present in the Dead Sea. Higher density leads to greater buoyant force. As the Dead Sea has very high density, it exerts enough amount of buoyant force to make us float on it. So, if we can float on the Dead Sea, we are definitely not going to drown in it. <laughs> Hooray! Topic, light and sound. Oh. Hmm? Why do we see lightning before thunder? Don't go out tonight, a huge storm is coming. Look at the weather outside. See, there's a huge lightning strike. Hooray! Now, very soon, you're going to hear some thunder. <laughs> I told you. Mm. Don't get scared. It's just thunder. Do you know why you saw the lightning before you heard the thunder? Mm? I will tell you. Hmm. An interesting fact is that lightning and thunder occur at the exact same time. Then why do we see lightning first? Mm. This is because a light travels faster than sound. The speed of light is 300 million meters per second, <laughs> while the speed of sound is only 340 meters per second. <laughs> Thus, the light from the lightning travels much faster to our eyes. <laughs> 
As a result, we first see the lightning, shortly followed by the sound of thunder. <laughs> Topic, heat transfer. <laughs> Why do we use a black umbrella in summer? Mm. Hey, looks like you're heading out today, <laughs> but it is so hot outside. <laughs> Why don't you take a dark colored umbrella, preferably black? <laughs> See, I warned you, at least now use the black umbrella. <laughs> now, do you notice the heat? No, right? Do you know why? This is because in summer season, the temperatures are quite high. Now, as compared to other colors, a black colored umbrella, being dark, absorbs most of the light and ultraviolet radiations coming from the sun and gets heated. It then radiates the heat back into the air, thus making a black umbrella a good choice to Hooray! use in summers. Topic, heat transfer. Why are cloudy nights warmer than clear nights? Huh? Hey, look at the weather outside. It is too cloudy. No, don't go near that bonfire. It is going to be warm tonight. Huh? <laughs> you don't want to listen to me, right? <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> Look, I told you. <gasps> At least now will you listen to me? <laughs> During the day, our Earth receives light from the sun and gets heated. Now, during a clear night, that is, when there are no clouds, oh. this heat easily escapes through the atmosphere into space, <laughs> resulting in cooling of the Earth. <laughs> now, to understand what happens on a cloudy night, mm. let us heat the Earth once again. Huh? In this case, the clouds act <laughs> like a blanket, preventing the heat from escaping into space. Since the heat remains in the atmosphere, cloudy nights are warmer than clear nights. Hmm. Topic, heat. Why is a laboratory thermometer not used to check body temperature? Oh, you have got fever. Why don't you check your body temperature using a thermometer? No, please don't use a laboratory thermometer. You won't be able to get the correct reading. Why don't you try another one? This is called a clinical thermometer. A clinical thermometer is oh. different from a laboratory thermometer. Uh -huh. Oh, seems like you have ah. made your choice. A clinical thermometer has a kink. When we check our body temperature, the kink ah. present in it prevents the mercury from falling back down, thus helping the thermometer to hold the temperature recorded by it and giving us an accurate reading. Hmm. Now, in a laboratory thermometer, huh? this kink is absent. This is because a laboratory thermometer is meant to measure immediate temperature. Hence, mm? after recording our body temperature, until we check it, the mercury will fall, thus not giving us an accurate reading. <laughs> Topic, specific heat of water. Why is water used in hot water bags? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Huh? Oh. Looks like your leg is hurting. Mm. Use this hot water bag. It will give you some warmth and provide you relief. Huh? <laughs> no, the bandage is not going to help. Oh! See, I told mm. you. At least now will you use this hot water bag? Mm. Hmm? <laughs> you are feeling better, right? <laughs> Do you know how a hot water bag gave you warmth for such a long time? Oh. This is due to a concept called specific heat. Specific heat of a substance is the amount of heat energy absorbed or lost by that substance to change its temperature. Now, the hot oh. water bag consists of hot water. As compared oh. to other liquids like milk and acetone, the specific heat of water is much higher. Huh? Hmm? This means that as compared to others, oh. water needs to absorb a large amount of heat to become hotter. Mm. Now, did you know that water will take a long time to cool down as compared to milk and acetone?
<laughs> Thus, water will take a longer time to become cool. Hence, it proves to be very useful in hot water bags because the warmth can be utilized for a longer time. <laughs>